In Scheme, we now know about functions, but we don't yet know about data. In Scheme, most data is represented by pairs, and those pairs are used to form lists, which are just like the linked list at data abstraction that we developed in Python. Okay. The only difference is that in the late 50s, when this language was developed, computer scientists like to use very confusing names. So instead of saying pair, they said cons, which is a two-argument procedure that creates a pair. Instead of saying first, they said car, which is a procedure that returns the first element of a pair. And instead of saying second or rest, they said cooter, which is a procedure that returns the second element of a pair. As we've seen before, pairs can be used to construct longer sequences by using that linked list idea, where each pair represents the first element of a list and the rest of the list. But in order to finish that, you need some notion of the empty list. And in list, that, that's and in Lisp, that's called nil. Same within Scheme, because Scheme is just a dialect of Lisp. Okay, so they use these weird names, and they also used a non-obvious notation for what a linked list is displayed as when it's written as text. A list in Scheme, which is really a linked list, is a pair in which the second element is either nil or another list. But scheme lists are written in parentheses, separated by spaces, without any nesting. So conceptually, the structure of this list is nested, first and rest, has first and rest, has first and rest. But when you write it out, you don't show that nesting. There's something called a dotted list, which has a value for the second element of the last pair. So normally, a linked list has this restriction, that the last thing has to be nil or another scheme list. But a dotted list doesn't have that restriction at all, so it might not be a well-formed list. So those are the rules. Let's look at examples. Lots and lots of examples. That's how you master this particular topic, which is worth understanding because it's always involved in some aspect of scheme as you work on a larger program. Okay. So I can cons together one and two. That means create a pair with one and two in it. And if I look at x, it will be displayed as 1.2, which says first element one, second element two. The car of that is one, the cutter is two. No big surprises so far. The big surprise comes when I cons one, cons two, cons three, cons four, and nil creating a linked list structure. Instead of displaying with a lot of dots and a lot of parentheses, it's just written in parentheses separated by spaces. So you really did create this nested structure. We just write it down in a simpler way. And that's what I mean by non-obvious notation for linked lists. This thing, this scheme list right here, really is a first element and the rest. We just don't draw a lot of extra parentheses in order to try to keep things simple. That's not a well-formed list because it has a dot in it, but this one is. If I cons together one and two, I get one dot two. But if I cons together one and the result of consing together two and nil, I get a list that is well-formed, so it doesn't have a dot, with one and two in it. So even though this looks simpler than that, it's actually a nested structure, whereas this is not. So the cutter of the first thing, cons one, two, is just the number two. But the cutter of the second thing, cons one, cons two, nil, is actually a list containing the number two. So whenever, I have some name bound to a list, such as one, two. Taking the car of that list could give me anything. That's just the first element. 
but taking the cutter of it should give me another list. And taking the cutter of the cutter of it will give me the empty list, or nil. Now we can combine functions and data together. I could write a procedure called length of s, which computes the length of s. In order to process a linked list, I have to iterate through it to see how long it is. And the only means of iteration we have is recursion. So if it's the case that s is empty, then we know exactly how long it is. It has length 0. Otherwise, we have to add 1 to the length of the rest, or cutter, of s. By closing all of the different combinations that I opened up along the way, I've successfully defined this procedure. I can load it by naming the file after a single quotation mark, and then I can compute the length of s, which should be 2 because there are two elements. And if I compute the length of the list containing 3, 4, 5, 6, then I'll get 4. So this is interesting. List is a procedure that takes an arbitrary number of arguments and puts them into a list. So if I list out 3, 4, 5, 6, I get the list 3, 4, 5, 6, which has the rest of that list as 4, 5, 6. 